because how big this race is, it's the, you know, the biggest single event that, that you're going to race in stock car racing and, and in a driver's career and one of the biggest races in the world. And, you know, what, what today has reminded me of, it's been, what, a decade since uh, Hendrick Motorsports has, has won the Daytona 500. And through those years, I think what we've, you know, gained the appreciation more so than ever is how difficult this race is to win and all the different things that have to line up in order for you to, to win it. And then also uh, how exciting and fun and amazing it is to win it and to see these guys celebrate. Um, that's what it's all about. So when you know those things, um, and, and William's been around the sport long enough to, to see it not, not go that way, um, then, then yeah, you're hungry for it. You're, you, you're trying to make all the right moves, you know, all the right decisions to put yourself in position, your, the team as well. And, um, and, and they did all that. But, um, but at the same time, at the end of these races, the way that they unfold, especially the, the speedway races and the, you know, the, the way the draft works, uh, you just put your foot on the floor and, and wait for the checkered flag or the white flag, you know, to, to wave. And, and whatever comes in between that, that's, that's, that's your, your role and your job. Jenna Fryer, AP, congratulations to all of you. Um, for my first question is to Rudy. Um, William said that was a really long lap and a half, and he didn't know that he won, but you came over the radio and, and indicated otherwise. How did you know? Yeah, I just, just heard it pretty much behind us from the uh, – from I think it was the MRN right on the, on the radio on the big on the uh, loudspeaker as well. I heard it first, so um, you you just took their word for it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> my, my second question is: Jimmy Johnson said after the race how William used to trick or treat at his house. Did he trick or treat at your houses as well? I don't I don't remember him coming to my house, but I do remember when we signed him. Jimmy said he showed up with a pillowcase at trick-or-treating so uh it's pretty special to see him win this tonight he told me he said i never thought i'd race here and now i've won the daytona 500 so pretty special it was funny seeing jimmy out there tonight and not being in one of our cars that felt really weird it was a little weird for us too mr h because one time we might have so that he was in the 48, and he wasn't, obviously. So, <laughs> all right, if we can get a mic over here, please. Uh, Brett Baldeck with Motorscape.News. Uh, Rudy, this is for you. So we have something in common. We're both from little small towns outside of Rochester. So what does it mean to be a Daytona 500 winner coming from Livonia, New York? Yeah, it's um, it's amazing. You know, I've got a, a great family. Um, I grew up in a, in a salvage yard working on cars, and, and that's all we've ever done. And tiny little town um i don't i don't know that there's many uh daytona 500 champions in western new york let alone um anywhere near livonia rochester new york so i'm uh i'm blessed to, to work with these with this group of uh you know gentlemen next to me and, and with william so i'm uh i'm just just proud and um can't wait to get to get home and someday and then show it off all right we'll go chris over here yeah i have a question for jeff over here to your right um if you would so indulge me, by the way, my childhood dream was to see you in the Daytona 500, so this is pretty dang cool. Uh, my question is, um, how does this compare to the, the three times that you won as a, a driver? Are there similarities and differences you can point to? Um, I, I think Rick will tell you, you know, that, um, it, you know, it's, it's certainly not the same as being in the driver's seat, but but we've, we've been able to celebrate some big wins and championships uh, together, and I think you know, our excitement and my excitement being, you know, on this side of it and seeing these folks, how hard they work and just seeing our people, how, how they, you know, rally around the, the teamwork that goes on. And, and it just makes you appreciate it so much more um, when you know that, that this is, this is a company win. This is, this is a team effort. Um, and I, I might not have been driving the car tonight, but I felt like I made every lap uh, with, with our guys, especially with the 24 and with William and those closing laps when he was, you know, out front. And um, to me, when, when, when I found out that they had won, um, I, I honestly was about as excited as I ever was when I was driving. Does the fact it was the 24 out of all the four cars make it any more special for you? 
I try not to be biased, but William's making it hard on me. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it is 2024, um, and you know, the 24 is always going to be very, very special to me. But I, what I love the most is seeing him make it his number, and 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 building that fan base. Um, not only of the the 24 fans been around for a long time, but his own fans, and that's. Uh, and a, a win like this, my gosh! I mean, this is going to elevate that up to the, to the next level and and bring a whole lot more new fans to the sport and 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 for William. So that that's what I get excited and, and look forward to. Thank you, Jeff. All right, we're going to go Davy, Ryan, Zach, Jerry, Shane. Okay, go ahead. Davy Siegel with Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. To your guys' right down here in the first row, Alex seemed to think that you guys may have put a little bit more effort in terms of race speed in your guys's four cars as opposed to qualifying speed given that you guys were on the pole for six straight years whatever it was is there anything to that can you guys speak to the preparation that you guys had coming into this week not just for you guys rudy but for the entire organization yeah, rudy. yeah i mean um we've been working really since pretty much i've gotten to hendrick this is the start of year four but that's that's been the key is how do we race better so it, and sometimes it takes a little while, but it's because you only do it six times a year if you count Atlanta, but really four times a year. So uh, we've been picking at it a little bit here and here and he, there. And we've uh, told Aga at the end of last year in the playoffs that was 400 cars up front at the end. Uh, we didn't get the win, uh, but it, it's showing off. It's the whole company working towards to winning the Daytona 500, and we'd like to get the pole as well. But but 500 was uh, was the number one goal for sure. And Rudy, you were telling us out there that, you know, you guys want to be champions of more than just the championship this year. Daytona 500 champions, Coke 600 champions, big races, big events. Where does that come from? Does that come from the gentleman sitting next to you there? Is that an internal goal with you and the 24 team? I think that's William and I, and obviously it's, it's you know, leadership from above as well. But, um, you know, last year we proved that I think I think we proved year after year that we're winners now, but um, now it's time to be champions. So Daytona 500 champions, and like I said, the World 600 champions, those big races, are uh, we're setting our eyes on those and winning the championship at the end of the year. <clears throat> All right, if we can get a mic to Ryan McGee, please. Thanks. Uh, Jeff, a lot of people watch this race that don't normally watch NASCAR racing. And a lot of them are going to go, well, now that guy was involved in that big crash earlier. How did he end up winning the race? H how do you explain that to people that don't normally watch NASCAR racing? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of things that were taking place, you know, at that moment. I mean, there was, you know, you had what was happening up there, the first two with, with Ross and, and with Keselowski kind of trying to battle to get position for the lead. And everybody behind him is just pushing and shoving and, and it was time to go honestly I, I think that you know you watch this race and throughout the whole race you go well these guys you know are minding their you know kind of their their p's and q's and doing everything the way they should and and that's because it's not time to go yet you know it's it's time to make the strategy play out it's time to put yourself in a safe position but but also in as good a track position as you possibly can and execute the pit stops and and then when you get to the past that final pit stop then it's it's time that you know you're just gonna make all the best decisions using every um you know amount of information from your spotter and your team that you possibly can and just instinctively and i think to me what i saw was our our teams were, were our our guys like our drivers all the chevy guys i thought worked well together but it was great to see alex pushing william to try to get him to that lead and that and that's exactly what you want those guys to do unfortunately at that time there's just a lot of movement and and so william's trying to you know make that move of that one little gap and, and, you know, when Alex gave him a little nudge, that's, that's all it took to, to turn him and, and, you know, make contact with those guys. But to me, that's, that's just racing. That's just a product of this, this type of racing that happens. All right, we'll go to Zach. Zach Sturdy, NASCAR.com. Jeff, for you, on Wednesday you said that you really wanted the four current guys to be able to experience a win like this. Um, to see William in victory lane, what did, what did you see him doing? Was he soaking it in? Um, and, and just what's the excitement level of a guy like him being able to celebrate a moment as big as this one? Well, Rick beat me out to the start-finish line. I, 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 <laughs> I think the whole team. And I got a bad luck. <laughs> 
I've never seen him look so young as the way he was just jumping up and down and excited. But so I, I kind of missed that that first moment with Rudy and the guys and Rick uh, out there at, at the start finish line and William. Um, but when I finally did get to William, I mean, it, you know, it's just just the youthfulness and excitement and, and, and exuberance was just off the charts. And and it's funny, I, I see it's it reminds me so much, you know, of these moments that I've been able to experience. But to see it through him and through the team is so cool to me because I see him like just super excited. And then then, you know, you're going through the motions. You got certain things you have to do, interviews and pictures. And then and then all of a sudden you could just see him go, oh, my gosh, like I just won the Daytona 500. And then it just ran the excitement ramps right back up. Thanks. All right. Our next question will go to Shane. Hey, guys, Shane Connick, Charlotte Observer. So, Rick, Williams' success last year speaks for itself, and now he's adding Daytona 500 winner to this resume. And as he continues to etch his name into NASCAR history books, what is it that you notice about him, you know, not even just his success on the track, that's making him, you know, a star for this sport? You know, I think when you look at his work ethic and this guy sitting beside me, uh, they're a lethal combination, and the confidence level between both of them. It's amazing. And William puts in the work. I mean, that's all he thinks about. He's in, in the simulator. He's watching tapes. Uh, he, has, he has worked so hard. People, won't, people don't realize how much time he puts in. But bringing Rudy on gave him that confidence because they were so successful in the truck series. And man, they just picked up and clicked. And it, when you think about his age, and how smart he is and how he races like a guy that's been doing it for a long time, doesn't make many mistakes, uh, but he just he eats and drinks and sleeps winning, and he puts in the work. And uh, I think Rudy can attest to that, but he, the guy is uh, – I've never seen anyone any more dedicated putting in the work than he does. All right, we'll come up here and give microphone to Jerry. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on that. Rick, last week you had your own personal private flyover uh, during one of the events that we had here, and then then you know, the rains fall yesterday to push the race to today for your 40th anniversary of, yeah. of you know, the first race of Hendrick yeah. Motorsports. Yeah. You know, everything seems to be going really right for for you today. Can you just comment on on how everything came together? You know, I. I guess it's been a drought winning this race. We led a lot of laps, and I just refused to get excited. And uh, I was standing there when it was over, wondering, did we win it? Was it a one more lap? Did the caution catch us? Uh, it, when they were lined up, I thought we had a great shot. Uh, you know, when I think back 40 years and coming down here and feeling like I didn't belong, seeing Junior Johnson and the Petties and Wood Brothers and Man, here we were with five full-time people and uh, no sponsor and finishing the top ten. And uh, But to win this race, I guess since it's been ten years, Jeff, ten years? Yeah. Ten. yeah um, I forgot how thrilling it really <laughs> is because the disappointment of coming off of four leading and getting crashed, uh, I, I, it's hard to put in words how I feel about NASCAR the sport and being able to participate in it and now tying I guess the all the all-time record for wins here in the 500 uh, I'm uh, I think it's going to sink in next week a little bit more mm -hmm. but uh, yeah the flower was pretty cool the other night <laughs> but uh, no I, I I'm just um, I'm in awe of uh, how hard it is to win this race and uh, and I'm just so happy for William and Rudy in the organization, and to see Alex finish second, that was great. 